I have never loved the manager more than this moment right here. One thing that I've been very adamant about and saying for this entire show's run is that if you see killer maids or anything, you should be turning and noping out of there. You should not be getting Stockholm Syndrome where you start accepting that this is just the way it is. And the fact that after our girl goes full Terminator mode and she's blasting a cash register and stealing the money, manager opens that door, takes a couple looks and says, no words, just shuts the door and walks away. I have never loved that character more than in that moment because she finally did the one thing that I've been saying everyone in this situation should be doing. Leaving, getting the hell out of Dodge, and just saying this ain't worth it. But what an end to Akiba Maid War. I think it's probably safe to say there won't be a season two unless they do want to show it in, obviously, I mean, we did a time skip, right? We see Nagomi as a 36-year-old maid who is now in a wheelchair, but goddamn is she rocking that and making it stylistically impressive. So is there room for it? Maybe. But at the same time, I kind of feel like I'm more good with it stopping here. But then again, you can make the argument maybe season two could build up to how we get to that time skip. There's always that possibility. But in terms of an ending, did it deliver what I thought? Yes and no and uh, maybe? Because here's the thing, we get to see Violent Nagomi. She fully, absolutely snaps, and I mean, she shoots a maid seemingly in her kneecap, and I mean, she was blasting fools left and right. Yes, she reverts back to her default self, but that's kind of like the beauty of this entire ending, is that the shitty leader ends up getting blasted in the head, so she's not going to be in charge anymore. Nagomi ends up being able to be in a May Cafe that she always envisioned it should be like, and the fact that, you know, once again, we have another 36-year-old maid who people are now being like, instead of saying, ooh, she's too old for the job, people are coming around just because, like, she is the absolute best. But we also get to see her snap as she should because, I mean, I know there was some pushback. People are like, you know what, I bet next episode's gonna come around, there's not gonna be a funeral, it was just a bait. But uh, the thing is, is if you did watch the trailer for episode 12, which when I started seeing a lot of people start speculate, what if she's not dead, I thought to myself, maybe I'm silly. Maybe it's on me, I'm gonna have pie on my face because I didn't, you know, obviously see the clear bait and switch coming. No, the preview for episode 12 literally shows the funeral, so I was like, okay, no, they are committing to it. And I think that's for the best, right? Because typically when you reverse a death that is so perfect, like, sure, sometimes you cut away before you see a character die, right? So then them coming back isn't as much as a bullshit bait and switch. But we saw the life in her eyes last week disappear, so we knew for sure that she had to be gone unless they wanted to do some magical shenanigans. And I think the entire episode of this is seeing someone who was so normal at the start fully snap and go psycho. After getting almost beat to death, she's just laughing on the street like a maniac. She is an absolute lunatic after the death of Ranko. But the fact of the matter was, she came back to who she was at the start. And I think when you look at the flashback that we've been getting from their lives and from the leader of Creature Land to obviously Ranko herself, it used to have an element of normalcy that was, yes, surrounded by this intensity, but the fact of the matter was, the thing that set everyone off was a death. A death is what triggered everything to get more chaotic, and then in return, a death is what set everything to get more chaotic in present day as well. But the fact that the way they broke the cycle which it wasn't going to completely work when it came to just this woman still leading. But the fact that you have the most adorably hilarious what the hell moment ever, where they all come to the cafe, and they're all ready to draw guns, and they just act like a normal maid cafe, where they bless the drinks, they have a sing and dance marathon, like what are we seeing? And the fact that it does work, but you can't help but just see her shoot multiple times and the fact that someone actually rose up and said no more and shot her i mean i was expecting nagomi to be fully dead i actually was you committed to killing ranko and seemingly you broke the cycle with nagomi so her death triggering a overall change i thought would work yes it would be painful as hell but i was willing to accept that so to see her come in and do her little spins and seeing it 20 years later or so or 15 years later however old she was right it's a nice change of pace to see how you did have stakes, you did have sacrifice and consequence, but it wasn't completely hopeless after all. And I think the best part of that entire last scene is the manager was nowhere to be found, so she couldn't get her grubby hands over anything and ruin it more than she already did. But I was actually surprised by how, like, it wasn't all for show and, like, she actually was willing to shoot people and she was willing to kill people and she was willing to die herself. Overall, when you look at the message and what Nagomi's character was overall in this show, to see how she was influenced positive and negatively throughout this entire situation and then in return how she was the biggest change in this going back to a 
seemingly normal lifestyle, I thought was really effective. And sometimes you look at a show and say, maybe one season is all you need for a show like this. And I think this is one of the cases. The thing is, there's two options you could go about things. Really one, but I'm going to just play devil's advocate and say maybe there is two ways. The biggest one is that you could have multiple seasons where, because it was such a big time skip, you could see how they got to that present day moment. So sure, you could keep doing it. But here's the thing, would that really be as interesting when the violence is now toned down and it's just typical made shenanigans? Probably not. You could also go about things in a way that is present day and maybe a new threat pops up and something like that, sure. But sometimes you do leave a show and say maybe one season is all you need and that's kind of how I feel with this one. But they announced a season two, I'm willing to see where they go they prove me wrong almost every episode where I thought I knew where it was gonna go or maybe I was questioning if this was the right move and they delivered 12 for 12 and they ended Akiba Made War in the most Akiba Made War fashion and while I am disappointed we didn't get our race car episode which maybe that could be an OVA or something you know fingers crossed anime producers out there I still think this was a hell of an episode and maybe you can make the argument as well Maybe a season two could be possible prior to Ranko's death. Like maybe there's, you could fill in some extra spots of different goofy things. Like that's always a possibility as well. So you never quite know. But as a whole, like was this an effective, memorable anime original? Absolutely. One of the craziest shows I watched this year. One of the freshest shows that I watched this year. And the fact that it was just a consistent run of Akiba Made War. I couldn't have asked for anything better. In general, most of the characters had me raising an eye or two. I mean, the fact that instead of the typical glow sticks at a dance or a concert, you had the guns waving, and I'm just like, that is Occupy Made War. You can just show that image or like just a small video of like the singing and dancing with maids like having guns out. That is how you sell someone on this show. Despite it coming from like one of the last moments of the show, that is what you need to show them. Or characters pushing on Creature Lion's boss's face, and I'm like, holy shit, how are you not dead yet? I just love this show. I think it was pretty obvious over these videos, but there was something that, instead of it just being that show that was, like, episode one, everyone talked about episode one because it was bloody, it was crazy, what the hell? And the fact that that crazy moment came back to bite Ranko in the ass in terms of what happened when she left prison and, you know, sort of revenge that triggered everything. The fact of the matter was, it was so much more than just crazy maids killing, there was actually a story and character progression in this mafia-style story that as insane and silly as it was, made perfect sense for this world because anime can be whatever it wants to be. You just have to make sure that it's not just there for shock value, which is exactly what this show did. It wasn't just there for shock value. It was shocking. It was, what the hell are we seeing? But at the end of the day, it was a story about how maids became such a mafia crazy ass story, but then ended up in a more neutral, normal environment once someone who looked at maids her entire life got a hold of this entire operation in over 12 episodes, changed it for the better. But I leave with a smile on my face saying, what the hell did I just watch? But damn, if I need to rewatch that. So let me know what you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. I have a bunch of live reactions going on over on my Patreon. You can also get video shoutouts, so do consider supporting that if you so wish. But until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.